What is a NoSQL database? A database is like a super organized container where we store lots of information. Think of it as huge filing cabinets full of different types of files. In a normal database like MySQL, we have a specific way of organizing and storing these files. But in a NoSQL database, things work a little differently. The NoSQL part stands for not only SQL, meaning it doesn't follow the same rules as traditional databases like MySQL. How is a NoSQL database different from MySQL? Well, in a MySQL database, we use something called tables to store our data. Tables are like spreadsheets with rows and columns. Each row represents a piece of data, and each column represents a specific type of information, like names, ages, or favorite toys. But a NoSQL database doesn't use tables. Instead, it uses something called collections. Collections are like big folders where we can put different types of data together without worrying about following a strict structure. It's more flexible. NoSQL databases also have a special power. They can handle massive amounts of data much faster than MySQL. This can be really helpful if we have lots and lots of information to store and retrieve quickly, like sorting through a huge collection of your favorite toys. NoSQL databases are also great for keeping up with changing data, meaning they can handle updates and changes easily. Using NoSQL for cross-platform backend applications. So, a backend application is like the brain behind a website or an app. It's responsible for storing and organizing all the information that the app needs, like usernames, passwords, and other important data. When it comes to using NoSQL databases for the backend, it means we use a special type of database that allows us to create applications that work on different platforms, like computers, phones, and tablets. You might be wondering how it works. Well, think of a NoSQL database like a really smart organizer. It can store and manage lots of information in a way that's easy for different devices to understand. It's like having a magical translator that can speak all the different languages of computers. You see, different platforms speak slightly different languages when it comes to databases, and NoSQL helps bridge that gap. NoSQL databases are designed to be flexible and adaptable. They can handle different types of data and store them in a way that's easy to access and update from different devices. This means that no matter what device you're using, whether it's a computer, a tablet, or a phone, the backend application can talk to the NoSQL database and get the information it needs. Conclusion So, to summarize, a NoSQL database is a way of storing and organizing information just like a regular database. It's different from MySQL because it can be more flexible and handle huge amounts of data faster. Just think of it as a super-powered filing cabinet for storing all kinds of information in a fun and efficient way. I hope this helps you understand a bit more about NoSQL databases. Keep exploring and asking questions, my young friend. How to set up Kotlin with Android Studio Imagine you will try your guts to apply Kotlin and build your app in Android Studio, Yes we are very much anchored to platform technologies aside from identifying the different groups of technologies you are there also to amplify your skills in programming. Here are the steps to use Kotlin with Android Studio explained in a simplified manner for an 8 year old boy. 1. Open Android Studio Android Studio is like a special tool that helps us create awesome apps for smartphones and tablets. 2. Create a new project We start by creating a new project just like when we start a new drawing or story. We give it a name, like my awesome app. 3. Choose Kotlin. When we create a new project, we have to choose a language to write our app. We choose Kotlin, which is like a special code language that's easy to understand and use. 4. Design the app. Now comes the fun part. We design the screens of our app, just like we draw a picture. We can use buttons, pictures, and colors to make it look cool. 5. Write the code. Remember, apps are like puzzles made of code. We take little pieces of code and put them together to make our app work. In Kotlin, 
we write code that tells the app what to do when we tap a button or do something on the screen. 6. Test and run. Once we finish writing the code, we can test our app to see how it works. We run the app on a phone or tablet to see if everything looks and works just as we imagined. 7. Fix and improve. Sometimes the app may not work perfectly on the first try, but that's okay. We go back to the code, find the issues, and fix them. We keep improving the app until it looks and works just right. 8. Publish the app. Finally, when the app is working perfectly, we can share it with other people. We can publish it on a special app store where others can download and use our creation. Remember, creating apps is like a fun adventure where we use our imagination, problem-solving skills, and coding to build something amazing. With Kotlin and Android Studio, we can bring our ideas to life and create our very own apps. Project Drill Micro Project let us apply the React.js for web and mobile platform. Open the jseditor.io and start to ponder these codes. You can modify it later, by reviewing your React.js program.